There's a traditional African greeting amongst the Maasai tribe that focuses on how the children are doing. The greeting is, and how are the children? This greeting acknowledges the high value the tribe places on the well-being of the children. The answer to this greeting is, all the children are well. This response meant that peace and safety prevailed, that the tribe's priority of protecting the young and the powerless was in place. If our nation or our state was to be asked the question, and how are the children, and we use the lens of human trafficking to answer that question, the answer would be the children are not well. It is estimated that up to 300,000 American children are lured into sex trafficking every year. So what about Connecticut? People often think of Connecticut as a wealthy state, a state with a lot of resources, a state that has opportunities, a safe state, a state that is ideal for raising your children. This is Amara and King. Amara is the daughter of a close family friend. She's three years old. King is my grandnephew. He's two years old. They both live in Connecticut, in preschool. They're happy and well-adjusted children. But the reality is there's many children who are not. There are children in our communities that are being trafficked and peace and safety does not exist for them. The two youngest victims on record in Connecticut are a two-year-old child and a four-year-old boy. These cases were referred to the Department of Children and Family, our child welfare system in Connecticut, DCF. The two-year-old child was being sold by his uncle. The four-year-old child was being sold by his father who was a doctor, who was selling his son to other doctors in the community. People often think of human trafficking as kids being stolen and sold internationally. But the reality is human trafficking victims are children living in our communities that are being sold by family members, by trusted adults, or by friends. People also often confuse sex trafficking with prostitution. Sex trafficking as defined by the Traffic, Trafficking Victims Protection Act is the exchange of a commercial sex act for anything of value through the use of force, fraud, or coercion. But in the case of minor victims, you do not need to prove force, fraud, or coercion. No child is ever a prostitute. Our brains have a very difficult time accepting that human trafficking can exist in our communities. Brene Brown, in her Netflix special, A Call to Courage, talks about the research she did around vulnerability. She said that in her research, the following statement surfaced. The story I tell myself. She went on to explain that when we are confronted with difficult situations, when we are feeling vulnerable, our brains need a story to help us understand how to protect ourselves. So my question to you tonight is, what is the story you tell yourself about human trafficking? Often, the story we tell ourselves is not my child, not my community. But I want this thought to resonate with you. Every child can be a victim of human trafficking. It does not matter their race, their ethnicity, their socioeconomic background, what community they live in, or what school they attend. All our children are at risk of being trafficked. Did you know that in 2018, DCF received 210 unique referrals of kids who were high risk or confirmed victims of human trafficking? And of those children, 63% of them were living at home with a parent or guardian. People often think of human trafficking victims as runaway youth as youth living in foster care or in congregate care setting. But the truth is, human trafficking victims are children living in homes just like yours. For example, DCF received the referral of a 14-year-old girl, affluent community, two-parent household, no social service involvement. She started high school, and she met a group of juniors and seniors. She wanted to belong to that group. And they told her, if you want to be a member of our group, you will have to have sex with men for money. 
Because she wanted to belong so badly, she decided to do so. That same semester, her grades started to drop. Her parents got concerned, and they thought that she was using drugs. So they decided to, to search her room. In searching her room, they found a diary. And in that diary, they found hotel key cards and a ledger that had all the men she had had sex with and for what. They were mortified. They could not believe that their child was a sex trafficking victim. So they reached out to DCF for support. In the case of that young girl, she was recruited into trafficking by her peers. But often, our children are being recruited, groomed, and sold online through social media apps and through gaming systems. If you are raising a teenager, have raised a teenager, or work with teenagers, this image will resonate with you. These are my nieces, Natasha and Nicole. They are addicted to their cell phones. But the truth is, if we're all going to be honest in this room tonight, all of us are. We use our cell phones to communicate with family and friends. We use our cell phones for shopping, to keep up with the latest trends, for news, etc. Traffickers use these same devices to recruit and exploit our children. One trafficker stated that one night, he sent a friend request to every single child in a middle school. And he waited to see who would accept that friend request. And of course, a lot of the children did. Why? Because our children do not understand the concept of stranger danger online. Once he has access to their profile, he reviews their profile, studies the kid, understands what they like, they don't like, who their family is, what school they go to, everything about that child. And eventually, he'll wait, and one day, when that child is stating they want something, or they're angry with their parents or their friends, the trafficker will direct message them. And the trafficker will start to communicate. And because they know so much about the child from reading their profile, the child thinks that this is someone that's familiar and safe. So they engage in a conversation with the trafficker. Eventually, the trafficker will recommend, hey, why don't we meet in the community? I'll buy you something. I'll take you shopping. We can have a lot of fun together. And because this person now feels familiar, the child says, OK, and they meet the trafficker in the community. Eventually, the grooming continues, and that child is now being exploited. Traffickers also recruit our children at shopping centers, at malls, at movie theaters, from school, bus stations. They often will say that they're talent agents or they're modeling agents, and they lure children in that way. But the reality is 70% of all recruitment of our children is occurring online by traffickers. The other major issue is our children are being sold online. In the documentary, I Am Jane Doe, one of the presenters stated, you can purchase a child as quickly as you order a pizza. In 30 minutes or less, you can have a child delivered to your home or a hotel room to be exploited. The sale of our children has moved from the streets to online providing more protection to traffickers and buyers, and pushing our children further into the shadows, making them more vulnerable to exploitation. The reality is all our children possess many vulnerabilities. And because of those vulnerabilities, they are easy praise for traffickers. One of the major vulnerabilities our children have is their brain development. How many of you have asked the question, why do teenagers do stupid things? Raise your hand, because I know I ask it every day. Um, Abigail Beard did research in this area on the brain development of adolescents. And what her research indicated was that teenagers use their frontal lobe to make decisions, but that part of their brain is immature. Her research also indicated that the part of the brain that is connected to our gut instinct is also weak in children. And that weakness means that they're not able to discern danger in their environment. Traffickers take advantage of this. They know they want to make their own decisions, they know they want to be independent, and they take advantage of that. The other vulnerability is that our children want to be loved and accepted. And so, a former pimp stated, promise them heaven, 
and they'll follow you to hell. The reality is that traffickers will provide a loving relationship for our children. They will be the father figure, the boyfriend, the friend that that child desires. They will show them love and attention during that grooming process, only to then exploit them. If you do not love your children, focus your attention on your children, a trafficker will. To nullify the impact traffickers are having on the lives of our children, we need to protect them. So my call to action tonight is, is educate, advocate, and protect. Educate yourself, your children, your family, your community about human trafficking. Awareness is critically important to eradicate this crime from our communities. Advocate. Advocate for laws that protect our children, not their buyers or their traffickers. In 2017, our Trafficking in Person Council reported that there was nine arrests and one prosecution for a trafficking in person law in Connecticut. That same year, 202 children were referred to the Department of Children and Family for high risk or confirmed victimization of human trafficking. It is time that we hold traffickers and buyers accountable for the harm that they're doing to our children. Protect. I have had the opportunity over the last five years to work closely with child trafficking survivors, and I thought it was important to ensure I elevated their voices in this room tonight. So they have shared tips with me that I will now share with you. Tip number one, female survivor. If you see something, say something. This particular survivor's victimization occurred for multiple years. She felt that individuals knew what was happening, but they did nothing to protect her. One phone call could potentially end the exploitation of a child. Tip number two, male survivor. Know where your children are, who they're with, and what they're doing. Traffickers thrive on knowing that the child they're victimizing, that no one is looking for them. So it is critically important to understand and know where your children are at all times. Tip number three, female survivor. Know who your children are interacting with on social media and online. Educate your children about internet safety. Empower your children with information and knowledge that allows them to protect themselves from traffickers. I want you all to think about the children in your life. Think about the joy, the peace, the happiness that children possess. We all want our children to remain that way. We all want our children to be free from exploitation. One of my goals in life is to advocate for the well-being of children. I want children to be happy. I want them to be safe. I want them to feel love. My hope is that one day, when I am asked the question, and how are the children, my answer will be, all the children are well. Thank you.